Good afternoon, everybody. Rodrigo Fonador here with Asheville Cash Buyers, Asheville Real Estate News. I'm here with Gwen Lister, who is serving on City Council, Vice Mayor as well, and uh, looking for your second term, if I'm not mistaken, right? Absolutely. So uh, this episode of Asheville Real Estate News, uh, we just wanted to talk to Gwen and, and get a couple of different ideas and perspectives on, you know, some things that are real estate related and maybe something a little bit about you and, and kind of uh, why Asheville, why you're running and, you know, what, what would be something that we, people should consider when uh, when they go to the polls, whether it's real estate related or not. So let's start with you, though. How do how you end up in Nashville? Everybody has a different story. Right. My husband and I moved here 11 years ago. And uh, I think we came for the same reasons that everybody mm -hmm. else does. We, right. we came here on vacation. We remembered it when we went home. <laughs> and then we came back. We spent a month. Mm -hmm. we, rented a, we rented a house. Stayed here a month, and by the end of the month, we had put a money Not down really. on the house. <laughs> so Very cool. we fell and in love with it. You still in the same house? We are. Good. We well, are. Goodbye. We've done a lot of uh, renovation on it. Right. Most houses, like they got great character, but uh, anytime you buy a house, no matter how new it is, it always seems that as a homeowner, you want to do your own little well, tweaks to it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Very cool. So, uh, second term, mm -hmm. but your first term. What happened or what was the circumstances that encouraged you to jump onto the you know political arena and get involved? Mm -hmm. So, right, I was elected in 2013 mm -hmm. and really the reason I ran is I looked at the slate of the people that mm -hmm. were on city council and I felt like I could be additive. I used to run very large consumer mm -hmm. products companies. I ran the Coleman Company, the outdoor recreation company, Camping okay. Care. Yeah. And we didn't have that on council, and I felt like I felt like I could be additive with that background and that experience. And uh, did that play out the way you envisioned it? I think so. I think I have a more in-depth understanding of some of the than other of the budget and how large organizations run than some of the other members of council. So I feel like I help. Yeah, I bet I. I... Totally non-related, but uh, and maybe it's hopefully it's not too much on the spot. But city government, how similar to that is to that being and looking over, you know, a large company like Coleman. Are there any similarities, or is it kind of two different animals? Well, and well, government is definitely different <laughs> than business. You know, when right. people run and say, "Well, you know, it should just run like a business," mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that's true. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think some of the principles mm -hmm. should should apply right. but there are just so many different regulations around government than mm -hmm. there are business i mean one example is uh just the whole idea of when you when you go out and you try to find somebody a vendor to mm -hmm. do work mm -hmm. In the government, you have all these rules about oh you have to have three bids and they have to be sealed up until a point and then you only have sixty days to respond to uh, all these complicated rules that you just don't deal yeah. with in business private sector you know, versus public sector. exactly hmm. and and some of those are good <laughs> but it can be a little frustrating and and yeah. take a lot longer than in business yeah i i, I can imagine that and it seems like sometimes things take a long time right. <laughs> within the right. public sector so but i say to people i'm not sure you'd really want government to move a lot faster because you know you want to have time to have input into the process you want it to be as transparent as it can be and so it can be frustrating but not if you're on the other side of an issue <laughs> uh, it doesn't really matter so there's always going to be people on both sides of everything right, right? so um well in talking about that uh you know difference of opinions uh, obviously this is shows about real estate uh hot button uh, issue right now is the short-term rentals mm -hmm. ADUs, the mm -hmm. homestay provision. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your two cents on that? Where do you stand and what do you think is, like, are things good the way they are? Any changes we need to make? or I'm, I'm comfortable where we are right now with short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe we've, we've loosened up the and allowed for people to have more ability to monetize mm -hmm. their, their homes right. and real estate with the homestay mm -hmm. with the loosening up of the homestay regulations right. we no longer require you to serve breakfast mm -hmm. uh you know your house doesn't need to be as big so we've loosened a lot of that up uh and now really and, and, I, and the whole house rental mm -hmm. i think right now you've got council that's pretty consistent that nobody 
disagrees on that. Now the big issue is short-term rentals of accessory yeah. dwelling units. And my position on that is, frankly, an, assex, an accessory dwelling unit or an ADU is a home. Mm -hmm. It's a dwelling. It You can shower. You can it's a standalone, make, yeah. You can make a full meal. Um, and certainly, and they tend to be a little smaller. And so they're also good for small families mm -hmm. or elders. And we really have a need for that in the city. So... And I also feel like uh, it's it's a lodging use mm -hmm. when you ran out of a whole term rental, yeah. and that's <laughs> a, a whole house, and um, and and I don't want that in the neighborhoods. Right. So you, so you consider that the ADUs you'd want to see them as long term rentals, mm -hmm. so not not to be included short term. Right. So if it's an ADU, it's a long term, you know, minimum thirty day lease. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously another uh, conversation point is everything around affordable housing mm -hmm. and. Is there a definition for affordable housing? Because I know you can ask, it seems like 10 different people and you're gonna get 10 different answers yeah. in regards to what affordable housing is and uh, what are some possible solutions outside of the ADUs, which you've already referenced? Um, well, so just to step back, so the city defines affordable housing the same way the national government does, okay. which is basically 30, no more than 30% of your income mm -hmm. should, be spent on housing and utilities. Right, okay. So at, at 30%, it's affordable, mm -hmm. less than, or if it costs more than that, obviously it becomes unaffordable. Okay. So we we use a lot of tools mm -hmm. to incentivize people building new mm -hmm. affordable housing. And I think we have to just keep keep looking for creative solutions. But right now, so we've got the land use incentive grant, mm -hmm. which where the city will give proper, will reimburse property taxes if you maintain affordable units. We have the density bonus, mm -hmm. which allows you to have more density than you'd normally get by right. If okay. you have yeah. some of your units being, or some of your some property, of the structure. exactly, okay. be affordable. Uh, we have the housing trust fund, which will lend money mm -hmm. to developers who build some affordable units. So we have a lot of tools, but I think we have to just keep trying to be creative and try to make sure that sometimes we put tools in place and the developers don't use them because they're not, they don't fit with mm -hmm. the money. And I think the city has become better at talking to the development community and saying, well, what would work? What would incentivize you to build or have more affordable units. So it sounds like it's like one of those things that's continual conversation, always right. brainstorming right. because uh, I you're never going to have enough. You're never going to have enough. And, and obviously, um, I'm not sure if you'd agree with me or not, but it, it seems like this is an uh, issue that, you know, almost any given city in the U.S. that's right. growing and has people coming to it is facing, especially tourist oriented cities like Asheville. Yeah, I think so. if it's I think if a city's desirable, you're you may have an affordable housing issue. I, and, yeah. and you know, in a city where people a city or a town where people <laughs> right. don't want to live, then it's pretty easy to <laughs> uh, get something more cheaply, but there's a reason for that. Yeah, so laws laws of supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Um well on that note, something that uh, that's kind of happened or been changing as well, uh, property taxes mm -hmm. obviously have gone up, and uh, I know in some cases some people's taxes have doubled. Uh, with you know different conversations that uh, we've had with homeowners here in the area, uh, I think uh, the gentrification process and all that is very evident when you've got people who have been living here for 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. so they've paid their house off, they're on a fixed income, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden their monthly tax bill increases say 100%, that can make it all of a sudden unable for them to live there. And so what, is there anything to do be done about that? Or is that just kind of one of those things that it's growth? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a growth little, things. it's a little bit growth. The city, you know, we, we are continuing to get requests or needs for more services or better services mm -hmm. or infrastructure improvement. And that takes more money. And the city really has the vast majority of our revenue comes from property taxes. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the city, excluding the county, mm -hmm. uh, we we basically 
got the new valuation, mm -hmm. we reduced our tax rates so that it would be it would go down to what we call revenue neutral. So mm -hmm. in the aggregate, in the aggregate, the city would be making the same amount of property tax revenue. Okay. In the aggregate. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we increased it by three and a half cents mm -hmm. to pay for the bond projects right. that was overwhelmingly approved. What was it, like 70% or something like that? Oh, yeah. It was more than 70% okay. on all three of the bonds. Yeah. So we really felt like people un were going to understand that increase mm -hmm. in the property taxes. The issue is, because it's it was revenue neutral, if your property increased mm -hmm. more relatively than other people in the city, then you were going to see a, um, a, a, a bigger jump. But, but revenue neutral across the city would have been just every, you come out with the same amount of money. And, and I can, most issues, some people are going to be very enthused that their tax taxes go up because their valuation is higher and some people are you know, definitely right. not too stoked. Right. It's according to what your intention is with right. your real estate. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, As you know. <laughs> yeah. I, well, yeah, no. I mean, on our end, uh, for, for properties that we, you know, that are rental properties, you know, something that goes up $100 a month, for instance, that can be the difference between being profitable or not. Mm -hmm. uh, on properties that are short term, then yeah, anybody who's holding that during that valuation jump, it's, they it's, it's a nice it. positive. Right. Uh, so there's always going to be a positive or a, or a negative. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, as we're talking about uh, the the race and, and you know running again, mm -hmm. outside of the real estate or maybe within the real estate field, is there any specific reason that you say, hey, like this is what makes me unique. This is this is why you all should consider voting for me. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the reasons I I I got involved in politics mm -hmm. and was interested in city politics, I have a real interest in. Uh, in increasing active transportation okay. so pedestrian and bicycle mm -hmm. infrastructure oh, so i'm very awesome. interested in that and so i've been a big champion of that and a champion of increasing the transit service mm -hmm. so that i've been pretty strong on uh i also i think in the next go round, a couple things that I really want to focus on is I want to ride a herd on the how we spend the seventy four million dollars in bond money. I've asked yeah. that we change <laughs> our procedures around a little bit so that council is informed on a very frequent basis as to the status of those projects because I think it's important that our citizens that we spend the money the way we told the citizens we were going to spend. I think everybody and, would agree with that right. statement. And yeah. So I feel like I'm uniquely qualified with my background to like ride it. herd on <laughs> the bonds. And then the other thing is, is we are in the middle of creating a human relations commission mm -hmm. with the goal being every decision that that is made mm -hmm. in the city or in city government that it's being made with an equity lens. Okay. And this commission, uh, I'm I'm helping to form. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of forming it right now, and I'm looking forward to seeing seeing that happen and seeing the work that they're going to do. Yeah, no, it sounds really exciting. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, what are the important dates surrounding the election that we need to be aware of? Okay, so September twenty first mm -hmm. is it's tomorrow. Is tomorrow? Uh, right. Uh, early voting starts. Okay. So early voting for the primary starts mm -hmm. then. The primary date is October 10th. Okay. And then the general election date is November 7th. Oh, I bet that time just flies, doesn't it? It feels like it, right. <laughs> but, and uh, if somebody wants to get plugged into your campaign or learn more specifics, mm -hmm. what's the best way for them to do that? Okay, they can go to my website, okay. which is gwenwhistler.com, which is G-W-E-N-W-I-S-L-E-R.com. Great. And uh, for everybody watching, uh, just check out the, the notes or the comments uh, on the video. We'll have the website linked up. And well, yeah, thanks so much for taking some part of your day Thank to join you. us. Uh, once again, it's Rodrigo Fondor, Actual Real Estate News, Actual Cash Barrows, Gwen was incumbent and uh, another candidate for City Council. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Thank you.